Okay, I would firstly. I would firstly like to, to use this chance to, to wish everybody a warm welcome to uh, our third session of the day, uh, both those who are present in the room and those who are present online. Um, my name is Ivana Baraj and I'm a teaching assistant here at University of Belgrade Faculty of Law and it gives me great joy that I have the, the opportunity to speak about the gender uh, perspective of domestic violence and um, I in, cordially invite you to take part in today's session and to discuss with me any topic that you may find of interest in regards to domestic violence. Um, I am sure that uh, we are, t I am aware that we are uh, limited by time on one hand and on the other that you already had a chance to hear about domestic violence, uh, not only from Professor Lukic yesterday, but also from Professor Markovic, Ivana Markovic, of course, uh, some days ago. But um, I will offer you a quite different, uh, somewhat different, better said, perspective of domestic violence um, in order to enrich your knowledge on the said topic. And um, I would... I would uh, firstly like to use this. Uh, I would firstly like to use this opportunity to uh, make a remark uh, in regards to the modern understanding of domestic violence and its root that uh, uh, it has from the old patriarchy time. Uh, better said, one could easily mistaken that. Uh, Domestic violence presents uh, a result of power imbalances or potentially emotional imbalances between men and women. However, it is important to stress that uh, not only that factor should be taken in into consideration, but also that uh, the old patriarchy matrix uh, existing in the modern family has its effects on domestic violence. And to better understand it, I think that uh, you can all agree with me that the emancipation process uh, has had its effects on the understanding of uh, gender roles in our today in our society. And in that respect, we can speak about much more uh, empowerment of women, as well as uh, the fact that they are much more educated and that uh, they are financially much more independent uh, than they used to be unlike the, the past times in which the husband was the primary breadwinner and he was the authority of the house. Uh, nevertheless, unfortunately, the sad patriarch matrix still remains and persists in the modern family. And uh, I have some examples that could potentially explain it in a better manner, but uh, just to clarify it a bit before we turn to that, that examples, uh, if we imagine a family uh, of a husband and a wife in which uh, both the husband and the wife are educated and are of great welfare and uh, they are uh, emancipated, uh, they are aware of uh, the modern trends, and however, uh, there, there are also potentially cases in which such hu su husband uh, would potentially uh, batter the woman and uh, in which domestic violence would also be present because the husband has in its core and its beliefs the patriarch matrix that is still unfortunately existing in our uh, society. And uh, in order to understand it better, it's important to emphasize that unfortunately men usually have uh, the understanding although they are educated and they are, as I said, financially independent and uh, they are woke, much more woke than they used to be, uh, they still tend to, uh, to, to, to base their opinion on the gender roles that were existed, that, that existed for a very long period of time in our society. Uh, and in order to understand it uh, a bit better, I have here three examples. And the first example would be the one in which the male partner is more traditional than the female partner. And although the female partner is also traditional, uh, she is not traditional to the same extent as the male partner or as the husband, uh, but she is uh, less emancipated. For example, she, she doesn't have a salary or she is uh, not paid enough or she is not educated enough. And in such situation, there could be potential for the male partner to batter the woman. And my question to you is, what do you think the result would be in such situations? The question goes to both ones online and in present. Yes, uh, the result would be uh, like uh, violence has already happened and what is the... 
Yes. How, how would the, the wife, uh, the female partner, react in such situation if we have in mind that she is more traditional and less emancipated? Uh, okay, uh, first, uh, given the fact that uh, she is traditional, mm -hmm. maybe in the beginning, if the violence is not physical, she will not uh, be able to uh, see that it's the violence. For example, it's, uh, for example, physical violence is evident, but uh, sexual abuse is not. So she, in the beginning, maybe not think that it is a violence. Uh, after that, if she uh, realize that it is violence, uh, maybe there is a fear mm -hmm. of the per perpetrator mm -hmm. to, uh, so that's the second thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also there could be some psychological connection to the um, husband, for example, if he is the, doing the violence. And also, she is not. She is less uh, emancipated, which means that she is uh, financially dependent on her husband. So th that's all the factors. Given the fact that is a very difficult situation for a female to be able to to win this situation. It, it, it is important to stress, uh, I, I have heard that somebody has also raised his hand or her hand. Um, I think it's also important to mention that uh, regardless of the fact uh, of whether the female partner is more educated or, or is more financially stable or not, uh, it's more important to focus on the fact that her understanding of gender roles in their relation is set in a manner in which she understands that it is acceptable for her husband, for her male partner, to beat her up and uh, it is accept acceptable for her to uh, suffer the consequences of such actions uh, committed by the male partner. Um, is somebody also uh, willing to speak on the... Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Uh, my name is Larissa. <laughs> I also wanted actually to add what Marco added, but uh, just also to to add that uh, in a lot of cases uh, such women provide a wide range of excuses mm -hmm. for such uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that, that is correct. Uh, we will see later on in the presentation that there are a lot of excuses and probably one of the main excuses is that uh, the women uh, do not uh, lie their trust on the national authorities and they do not believe that they will be given uh, good protection on one hand and the other on the, end, on the other hand, I'm sorry, uh, they are frightened that the perpetrator will uh, come back and will uh, either batter, batter them again or, uh, what is worse, kill them potentially. So I think that there are a variety of reasons as to why the female partner is scared to report domestic violence. So uh, here are some of... Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Also, um, she, she would feel ashamed probably of what mm -hmm. happened to her because, I mean, being beaten by a person who is a member of the family uh, so she, she was guilty and ashamed, and so she won't talk about it with anybody, probably. Uh, yeah, of course, that, that, that is also one of the, the consequences that uh, can arise from domestic violence. She would be uh, not only uh, shameful of what has happened, but she would also be the one who, uh, who will blame herself for the actions that were undertaken towards her. So that is also important to take into consideration. So thank you, Professor, Professor Essa Letizia. And uh, okay, we have one. Yes. I can see uh, from a historical point of view, I can see um, uh, traditional roots from uh, Roman ancient Roman law, meaning uh, husband and father is uh, uh, pater familias, having uh, use uh, vite acnesis, meaning uh, he can uh, he creates life and he takes life uh, lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, woman inside the patri patriarchal family is seen 50% uh, as a wife, 50% as a, uh, with these marks, um, daughter to her husband. Uh, not, not even daughter, she is seen as property of the man, which, which makes it even worse. 
unfortunately. Um, so here are some of the potential results that could arise from this uh, example. Um, most likely the, the female partner will suffer domestic violence and will potentially allow for the male part partner to continue to batter her and unfortunately even kill her. Uh, the other option is that she will run away from their family home and uh, the, ter the third option that is also likely to happen is that uh, she would decide to kill her partner as she was subjected to the battering by her partner, of course. Um, I also have another example. So here we have the male partner who is more traditional. I'm sorry, I just have to fix something. Uh, so we have the male partner who is more traditional while the female partner is much more emancipated than him and uh, as you can imagine the tensions between them will more certainly arise because they have different beliefs and views uh, on the society and on the logics uh, and in such situation it will be much easier for the female partner to decide to leave her partner as she is woke and potentially economic economically independent and uh, more educated or there are of course, some other factors that uh, can uh, affect her decision. And uh, what do you think that the poten potential consequences of such situation could be? If we have a more emancipated woman on one hand and a more traditional man on the other. Yes? Uh, we would uh, have a fair fight. Uh, me okay, uh, meaning... Uh, uh, fighting for uh, se uh, oneself's rights mm -hmm. in a uh, in, uh, family situation. Yes, thank you. Um, do you want yeah, to add I mean, <laughs> Yeah, probably uh -huh. emancipated women would resort to law. And, you know, they would be aware of their rights and aware of that they could address to the attorney and uh, be, be protected. So not only to ask for a divorce, but even to sue against violence, etc., uh, etc. Et so there would be a lot more, how should I say, a lawful judicial manner, uh, lawful manner in which she could uh, fight for in, in this case, in such case. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Larissa. Uh, you also raise your hand. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Nemanja, what, what, uh, I think you were joking, but n not with a good point, F fair fight. What, what would it mean in the case that he is very traditional and she wants to protect herself and to, let's say, leave him be because she does not want to stand the violence. She knows that her right is to refuse violence. What is his right in this fair fight? What, what, would you, what did you want to say? I think you were joking. Uh, y yes, of course, it was a joke, meaning uh, in a uh, uh, legal uh, process, uh, he, her right uh, to be a sewer and uh, his right to defend uh, in, uh, in co on court, in court, uh, to defend himself. So in that so legal uh, pro process, uh, meaning. So you have the same views as Larissa, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Because she, she, she was speaking about the proceedings that she would, the female partner would initiate against the male partner. Is that your opinion or have I mistaken? With, with other words. <laughs> okay. But, but, but if he is very traditional, mm -hmm. he will not think about protecting any of his rights uh, in front of the court, but he will react in a patriarchal manner. So there are so many cases of femicide currently are could some of them be related to this phrase? i missed i missed that i missed sorry yes i i think okay, so, uh, okay okay no continue please because uh it wasn't clear for me what is actually here the the okay the difference is emancipation of the female partner so we are now actually questioning whether the more emancipated female pa partner is in greater danger because she yes. will probably take measures and probably provoke uh, even greater violence than the the, uh, the than the traditional woman who will you know uh, just be silent or keep living in a violent uh, marriage for years for her life etc. So I guess this is now the the the, the question. So. 
Yes, the, the question was related exactly to that. Uh, I, I uh, have stressed that the female is more em emancipated here in the second example than in the first one. And uh, you're quite right, Larissa. The, the point of this example is exactly that, that in such situations, because the tensions between the male and female partner are existing and uh, are rising, uh, if we have a female partner that is more emancipated, it is quite possible that she will get a lot. She will get on, on the nerves of the male partner and uh, she could eventual, eventually uh, provoke him to, to, to run, uh, run and find her and unfortunately even kill her. And I think that that was also the point that uh, Professor Dragica was, uh, wanted to make, uh, to wanted to make um, in respect to this example. Uh, we also have uh, the third example in which, I'm sorry, the, the, the computer is not <laughs> working. Okay, so uh, yes, Sehriban, in this sense, the man is suffering from an inferiority complex that, it, that is quite correct because um, I managed to see just a, just a glance of your message uh, because the, the man who is much more traditional understand, understands himself to be the authority of the house and he does not want to accept uh, any equality, let alone the, the female wanting to leave him because of domestic violence or something of the sort. And uh, the third example is um, probably most, most, uh, the most rare example, unfortunately. The male partner is more educated, economically stronger, and he's woke, while the female partner is less educated and economically dependent. And um, in a situation in which the male partner cares for, her, for his female partner, be it a spouse or an unmarried couple, uh, he will encourage her, encourage her to become more educated, economically independent, and also walk. And uh, he will also in turn encourage her to raise their children in such a manner and uh, potentially make their children walk as well and much more emancipated. Uh, so uh, I, I think that is quite clear and that, that is that, I'm sorry, I need to, to drink some water. <laughs> Uh, so so uh, it is clear that in such context, uh, it would be less likely for the perpetrator uh, to, to for it would be less likely for the male partner to actually be the perpetrator of domestic violence. And can I please ask, somebody has made a comment uh, in the comment section, but I cannot see it. So can, can that, that person just uh, speak up if it's not a problem, of course? Okay. Um, okay. Hi. Ah, okay. Hi. Uh, yes, it's my comment. Uh, I think that in this uh, example, the male partner would not only encourage his partner to raise their children in a more emancipated way, but uh, he would complete his part in uh, raising and educating their children as well, because uh, then um, it will be. Um, he will also recognize that it is his responsibility to raise their children not only hers. Yes, okay, thank you. I, I'm sorry I had some trouble in hearing you because the doors and, uh, are open here, so I, I'm sorry. Um, I, I wanted to, to focus your attention also to the fact that there is unfortunately another possibility that could rise in such situations, and uh, that is that the male partner could potentially use his advantage, being the one who is much more emancipated, and let his uh, female partner be subordinated by using the privileges or the, of the patriarchy division of gender roles. So that is also a potential scenario that could arise from uh, such, uh, con such situation or such, such example. Uh, does anybody want to add something? Yeah. I would think most of all, uh, from a psychological viewpoint, because given that, given that he is educated and all that, he's more likely to exercise psychological, uh, psychological duress, psychological violence, which can be more subtle, but uh, even more dangerous in some cases, uh, especially if she is morally dependent from him. Yeah, there, there is also the possibility that, that uh, some psychological power that he has can uh, turn into uh, physical power towards the female partner that would in turn also uh, be a result of domestic violence. So, but my, my question 
to um, all of you participating uh, is what do you think that would result from such an example? Is there a plausibility of domestic violence and what would be the actions taken by the female partner and by the male partner? Yes, thank you. Now it's much easier to to get rid of uh, physical violence, but there is always a pr uh, high high probability, high stakes to go, to get into emotional uh, violence, mm -hmm. uh, meaning uh, verbal off offenses and and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, do you want to add yes, something? Or, uh -huh. Exactly what the colleague said and uh, the professor Letizia said that the psychological violence is not really detectable and that the women are really not aware, especially in this situation where the male partner is a bit more educated and maybe have some knowledge about manipulative manners to com communicate with uh, her, uh, with his, uh, his wife and also she is maybe not aware of that of it's very mm -hmm. yeah of course <laughs> i agree with both and i would add that he uh, can use his uh, higher level of education of the the development of his mindset for manipulation but also for uh, considering uh, himself as higher value person that's okay but i would add maybe you do not agree with me but uh, due to the uh, facts uh, related to the a few femicide examples uh, happening recently here in serbia very well educa educated men did commit femicide they they are not only how to say focused on psychological violence but also easily turn into the physical violence. And, oh yes, of course. Uh, regarding that, Professor Dragica mentioned, uh, maybe um, that can be attributed to this, this uh, transgenerational transfer of uh, these traumas and these this functionalities, maybe. Okay, but something else, maybe the others do not agree with me, but I think that's the right point. Education, as such course, is not yeah. enough because education can be without taking into account enough self values gender equality approach just higher education as such which is not gender sensitive gender competent so independently of the level of his very high he can he can be the university professor phd etc etc but very patriarchal concerning his system of values Yes, and, and, and such people, okay. are, yeah, I would add that such people who are especially economically stronger, highly educated, and have a great uh, social and economic capital, huge networks of people, etc., are the persons who are in a position to commit domestic violence and to completely get away with that. And even more than just uh, focusing on this like judicial process, to gain uh, to to gain support from the audience from the public to gain support from the from the network of their own friends and people only due to his uh, economic prestige uh, not only economic but the social capital uh, ideological capital or whatever is um, in, invested in that matrix of uh, power and privilege. So these kind of people are really mm, a huge danger. And I personally know example of domestic violence in this case where uh, the, the perpetrator was very well aware of, of his power, his economic power and his uh, networks. Uh, and, and the victim was in... Uh, uh, double, triple marginalized position because uh, the story the victim was t t telling to all people around was the story that people wouldn't want to believe in only because it was against such pos a, a person of authority and influence. So that is the, 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 the case with this, the problem. Uh, 
Thank you, Larissa. And uh, I think it is also to, uh, important to consider the fact that uh, here we have a female partner that is less ac educated and economically dependent. And, and in such situations, it is more likely for the female partner to accept the domestic violence that she has been subjected to, unfortunately. And uh, such domestic violence could then in turn potentially lead to femicide, as both uh, Professor Dragica and uh, some of you uh, were saying. So uh, it is also important to take into consideration that perspective as well, as well at least from my point of view. Uh, I, I will quickly turn to the next slides because uh, of the time limits that we have. I will pass, skip this slide. And uh, I think it's important to analyze that there are different, different factors that uh, affect uh, the existence to the existence of domestic violence and that cause domestic violence and uh, we can of course uh, group them to socio-economic cultural uh, cultural and psychological factors and uh, here we have listed some of the socio-economic factors that uh, of course uh, a result uh, in domestic violence, one of them being lower levels of education, unemployment, poverty, lower levels of women's access to paid employment, women's higher level of education can also be a problem if we consider the story about the emancipation and the conflict of the emancipated and the patriarchal matrix that uh, we were just speaking about. Um, it is also to, important to stress that, uh, unfortunately, in today's society, we have a broad social acceptance of violence as a way to resolve conflict. And I just wanted to, to give you an example. Uh, those of you who are from Serbia have potentially heard about that example. Uh, it has happened recently in Serbia, so I'm, I'm not quite sure what was the outcome. Um, the, the perpetrator of, the, of domestic violence was a former reality star, and he is the son of a wealthy person. And uh, the victim of domestic violence is a model uh, slash actress slash starlet. I don't know how to put it exactly. But uh, what is very, very uh, unfortunate is that uh, a lot of people, at least from what I have heard, uh, were of the opinion that she had it coming, that uh, she is the one who uh, who caused the domestic violence and that uh, nothing else can be expected uh, if we have a woman with such uh, moral characteristics as the victim. So I just wanted to hear your opinion on the unfortunate social acceptance of violence as a way to resolve conflict. Yes, Marco, you have raised uh, hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, now I'm joining online, but uh, mm -hmm. That is the case because the women are portrayed that way in the media, for example. And also, we also heard hearing this uh, discourse that, uh, but uh, she was dressed like that. She was tempting him. So it's a very, very, uh, very negative, like, uh, wild, widespread opinion that the victim is always guilty. So. Yes, we, we, we are biased. Uh, when I say we, I, I, th I mean we, we as a society, uh, not myself included, of course. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, today's society is very biased when it comes to the causes of domestic violence and the characteristics of the victim. I would uh, just like to sum up um, in, in short terms. Uh, sorry, I just... Uh, okay, so we have another example of norms and beliefs in our society that support, unfortunately, violence against, against women, that sexual activity, for example, is a marker of masculinity, that girls are responsible for controlling a man's sexual urge uh, that is totally unacceptable, and I am sure, as Marco has already pointed out, that uh, we have heard of examples of uh, people saying that uh, she had it coming, why did she dress in such a manner, why was she flirting, why 
why was she laughing? And if we considered uh, such a position from, for women, and if we add the patriarchal ma matrix to that story, we can understand the negative effects that it has to domestic violence in our society. Um, one of the questions that I also wanted to ask you is, is the society to blame for such passive behavior of victims? And I'm quite sure that I already know the answer, but <laughs> here goes nothing. Larissa, yes. Okay, so this is also a, a complex matrix of uh, all factors, as you already mentioned. Uh, of course, society reiterates this concept, this patriarchal concept, which, uh, where um, men have uh, complete and unrestrained access to female bodies. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something that is in a uh, deep uh, subconscious and even conscience of our society and of the of the very patriarchy itself. So uh, females um, have to are raised to control their sexual urges while men are raised not to control them. And um, uh, the control of female sexual urges and the control of female body is actually the how should I say um, lacmus no. It's the it's like the measurement of the proper masculinity in that society. So it's very intertwined the female sexuality with with the measure of the real uh, hegemonic masculinity in that society. So when we have unrestrained hypersexual free women, uh, mm -hmm. we have lack of masculinity, lack of proper men in society. That is like that. These are patriarchal measure, measures we, which that date to the deep roots of uh, Greco-Roman civilization. And these are some, these are something which are uh, really uh, moderately, how should I say, covered, but they are still very present in the cultural models in which we live and we constantly see them. Yeah. Yes, and I also wanted to ask you, how do you explain the fact that domestic violence is omnipresent uh, in every system in the world, regardless of the fact whether that system is uh, considered to be more emancipated or less emancipated? Yeah, because I certainly, when, we call, when we're talking about patriarchy, we're not talking about like... Um, legalized institutional patriarchy as it was in Roman times, like with patria potesta. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, those are very complex layers and we're talking about even internalized patriarchy, which is, which is even more ominous and more problematic. And it's being constantly worldwide uh, reiterated through this, uh, especially through the sexuality discourse, which for me is the more mo most complex and mm -hmm. Thank you. And, uh, yes, I also wanted to add that um, while why it is uh, in that like amount widespread, uh, maybe it's also the um, thing that people think that that is a private thing of like people. So, but domestic violence, it's all, but it's not private thing. If we, for example, I'm very uh, like, um, uh, stress when the, I'm, for example, I'm making a party and the neighbors are first in a row to call the police. But when they hear that the woman is beaten on their yelling, uh, it's somehow, okay, it's not my business. So also that like, uh, not, it's not my business. Like, Yes, and normatively speaking, however, we have both international and regional instruments dealing with domestic violence for some time now because uh, they recognize domestic violence to be a human rights uh, issue. However, I, I do agree with you that when speaking on, on a level of individuals, uh, we are still frightened to act when we are aware and when we witness uh, domestic violence in our uh, surroundings. So in that respect, I would have to agree with you, Marco. Uh, yes? Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I know we don't have a lot of time. Uh, my ans uh, answer to this question is yes, for sure. Uh, and I, I think uh, even we don't have um, the right understanding about each other gender. Mm -hmm. uh, what you mentioned about flirting or this and that, if girl is laughing, because I think even our boys uh, as uh, one of our friends mentioned before, that uh, men are also the victim of society, but they are also suffering the, the non-gender equality. Uh, 
um, we never learn at the school by media. I mean, they are at the school. We just learn some theoretical things, mathematics, physics. Even maybe we don't use them in our life. We never learn about each other's differences and um, psychological issues. For example, still I see lots of boys. They think we women think like them about sexual issues. They think when we are talking to them, when we are laughing, we are sending some signals to them. But it's not a fact. It's not the truth. You know. I, I think lots of elements are connected to the society issues, and for sure, society is blind. Yes. Um uh, I, I have to agree with you. The, the most important thing to, to stress here is that domestic violence, fortunately, is not regarded as a private matter. There are instruments, international and regional, as I already said, dealing with it. However, we do have to take action in uh, recognizing and ra raising awareness of domestic violence, be it through education, through uh, social services, uh, through public prosecutors who have to, to take action when, are, when they have witness domestic violence. So uh, yes, uh, pro proper measures have to be taken uh, both on an individual and on a general level in order to combat domestic violence to, to an even more extent. Yes? Just to add, when the feminist, the second wave feminist movement uh, announced private is political, one of the issues, one of the messages, or one of the main crucial points was that the, fa the, that the domestic violence, family violence, violence towards uh, female uh, members of families should have not been treated anymore as the private issue that it has to be the public issue and the state responsibility to protect the weaker side uh, from this kind of violence. Okay, do I have m some time more or do I have to conclude? Just, you, you should conclude. It is 150. Okay, no, um, I, I would uh, just uh, like to cordially invite you all to take uh, some uh, part in, in looking the presentation on the, the Moodle that uh, my presentation will also be there. Uh, I have um, chosen two cases from the European Court of Human Rights that have dealt with the issue of domestic violence, one of them being Opus versus Turkey, which testifies to the fact that national authorities failed to protect the victim in such case. And I think it's important to uh, analyze and take into consideration the sad case. So I just wanted to make that remark. And uh, I just wanted to, take every, uh, to thank everyone who... who uh, the second case is the case of Kontrova versus Slovakia, and then it also relates to domestic violence and to the lack of actions made and condu conducted by the national authorities. Uh, it is quite scary because the police officer had uh, knowledge that uh, the woman was battered with an electric cable and he um, gave her an advice as to how to avoid uh, commencing criminal proceedings against her husband. So uh, that is only in short <laughs> to, to give you an explanation of the sad case. But uh, I do think that it is important to uh, take into consideration the case law of uh, the European Court of Human Rights in this respect. And uh, to conclude, I would like to thank everyone who took part, uh, both virtually, both in per uh, either in virtually or in person. And uh, I hope uh, I was not too too boring for you guys. <laughs> so, thank you. So thanks a lot, Ivana. Thank you, Leticia, for being here all the time and taking part in. There was some something in chat. Can you? Can yeah, you but check? But I cannot. I cannot see it. I mean, okay. we cannot see. Yeah. With with for some reason, what was is somebody who said something? If said in the chat, should say that loudly. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It was me. Actually, I want to ask uh, how to say when the national one is insufficient and the international one is not uh, implemented. Uh, what should we do in these uh, in these cases? For example, Turkey and uh, Turkey withdraw from Istanbul Convention mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, and now what can we do? 
Yeah, th that is there is a quite good question, and unfortunately, I am aware of the fact that Turkey has decided to withdraw from from the Istanbul Convention. Uh, uh, I would say that the best mechanism in such situations would be, would be to take actions. Um, on a smaller level, perhaps, through education or through the society itself, uh, be it uh, by way of uh, perhaps um, having more trust with the national authorities, that is one way to put it, or to be much more stronger when decide, deciding to take action and to report domestic violence. Because, for example, in the case that I have cited, uh, that, that happened in Slovakia, nevertheless, uh, the wife decided to withdraw the criminal report because she was convinced by her husband that she should not do so. So potentially, uh, the only mechanism is to uh, work on the emancipation process of potential victims of domestic violence. Uh, I would say that, that that is unfortunately the only answer at the time. So do you want to add something or? <laughs> Uh, no, thank you. Actually, if we uh, th there is not enough time, so uh, another time maybe. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, thank you all. Uh, with this, we will finish this session, and uh, at five o'clock we will uh, start again with uh, the course uh, sociology of law, gender perspective uh, within sociology of law. Thanks once again and. I think this session really was very successful. Thank you, Letizia. I want to thank to Zara and to th thank to Ivana and to all uh, very active participants during the session. Okay, bye and see you in the afternoon. And maybe just to remind that those, maybe, maybe some of you will not join the course in the afternoon. On Monday, we will start at on 10.30 instead of 12 with labor law. As a matter of fact, we will finish the, uh, the rest of lectures which were not held uh, when proposed uh, uh, within uh, the course business law and gender equality. We, we had to stop due to some safety reasons the lecture. So on Monday, 10.30, then 12 labor law course and afterwards uh, the ambassador, the head of the OSC mission to Serbia, uh, or the ambassador will come and will uh, deliver the certificates to those who will be here uh, in live in class, but the others will receive, those who, who deserve them uh, will receive their certificates online. We will talk about that. So thanks once again. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very bye. much. Thank, Thank you also for this last interesting, very interesting session. Thank you. Thank you, Letizia. Bye. 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 bye.